Sebastian Star with DrawerMonarchs.com. Today I'm going to be getting high on Android as I unbox this Galaxy S5. I've had this thing now since last Thursday. It came in the mail. I haven't had time to unbox it. I haven't even got to use this thing because I've been waiting to unbox it for you guys. So we're going to take it out of the box. I'm going to give you the rundown on some of the features of this really awesome device. Now, of course, I've been using the HTC One M8. And I really love this phone, uh, but this could make a play for my attention. Uh, it has some really awesome things like waterproofness. Uh, Samsung says that it is water resistant. We'll probably do some videos about that too. And then of course this is probably the first Galaxy S device uh, with TouchWiz that has not been laggy, or at least that's what reviewers have said, so I'm kind of interested to see that aspect of the phone. But anyways, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. Okay, so this is what we all came to see. We're going to take the Galaxy S5 out of its box. So we had the same wooden design on the box that we had from the S4. And we kind of had the same little ice cream sandwich style uh, packaging here. If we look at the back of the sleeve, it gives us uh, package contents. It says that we get an S5, a pre-installed SIM card, which if you're on Verizon, you have unlimited data, you will want to extract that from the phone before you boot it up. Um, especially if you pre-ordered, it says on your receipt that you'll automatically be upgraded to the $30, I think it's two gigabyte data plan, which you don't want to do. If you're grandfathered unlimited data, you want to pull that SIM card out, put your old one in, and I'll probably make a video about that too, uh, but just a heads up. And then it says standard lithium ion battery, which you do not want to hit with a hammer or it shall explode. I'm sure many of you have seen that video. Uh, wall USB charger, stereo headset, quick reference guide, global support guide. Well, no reason really to read this stuff off. Uh, since we're going to find out what's in it, the box itself. This is the 16 gigabyte variant. As far as I could see on the internet, there's no uh, 32 gigabyte variant available. I guess they figure they put that SD card slot in there, so uh, you should be able to get all the memory you want by going out and purchasing your own SD card. So i got to put the sleeve out of the way. We will pop the top. And voila, there is the Samsung Galaxy S5. So we'll go ahead and take this out of the box. And... Because I got this one online via the pre-order, I get to peel off my own plastic. And then we'll take off the film on the front. And there you have the Galaxy S5. More on that later. Let's finish unboxing the box. So we'll take this off here. A little compartment for the phone. We'll open up the flap here. We get lots of reading material. Everyone's going to read that for hours on end. Not. You get some really nice Samsung headphones. Uh, and then, of course, we always either use these or give them away. I've probably got 50 pairs of these. Okay, there is your wall charger. USB 3.0 cable, just like with the Note 3. Uh, you can also use a USB 2.0 uh, charging cable if you happen to leave this one somewhere or if you forget this. It does have that 3.0 charging port on the bottom, but you're still able to use a 2.0 uh, charging cable as well. And then the battery. There's your battery. This is a 2800 milliamp hour battery, I believe. Uh, yeah, 2800 milliamp hours, and that should give you plenty of juice to last you throughout the day. And it looks like that's everything in the box. We'll kind of set that to the side. Okay, so now for the fun part. We get to kind of dig into the phone itself. Uh, I have a little white piece of paper here because I've got a black, it's a very black desktop, and I'm looking to get some kind of vinyl cover for this. If you know somebody who does that kind of work, please send me an inbox. But anyhow, this way you guys can fully see the device itself. And we'll go ahead and pop the back off of the phone. Okay, and that SIM card is pre-installed if you're on a Verizon device. Uh, I'm sorry, if you're on an unlimited grandfather data plan, you want to make sure to remove that SIM card and install uh, your own SIM card that you already have in your uh, Note 3 or Galaxy S4 or whatever. That way you can retain your old package, your old plan. While we have the back off, uh, we'll take a look around. So you guys can see the micro SD card slot here. Uh, you can see the big speaker. You can see it really clearly without the back on. And then, of course, you can get a good look at the camera and the sensor there. So we'll go ahead and insert the battery. I'm not going to put in my SIM card just yet, but we'll go ahead and power it up and talk a little bit about the specs while we're powering up. Oh, look at there, powered by Android. Okay, so this does come with a 5.1 inch display. It is full 1080p HD, 432 pixels per inch, so you have an awesome, very clear display. And it did boot up very fast, just like the HTC One. We'll go ahead and continue talking about the specs. Now, the HTC One has a four ultra pixel camera, 
And the pictures look really great on the HTC One M8 screen, but when you convert them to your computer, you upload them to Facebook, they look really grainy and washed out. This phone, like I said, I've, I've just unboxed it. I've not really had a chance to play with the camera. This one comes with a 16 megapixel camera. The aperture size is 2.2, and of course it comes with autofocus, phase detection, touch to focus, manual focus, and HDR mode. This is also a 4K camcorder, just like on the Note 3. So not only do you get full 1080p on your uh, recording, you also get 4K recording. You know that you're gonna get lots and lots of clarity in your pictures with no graininess, unlike the HTC One M8. The front-facing camera, is a 2.1 megapixel camera and it shoots in 1080p high definition. Galaxy S5 is rocking a quad core Snapdragon 801 clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. And you can see that it runs pretty quickly here. This is TouchWiz and TouchWiz has been super slow. There are ways to change the animations to make it look faster. TouchWiz has always been super heavy. So when you have a 16 gigabyte phone with all the applications that are included, the TouchWiz launcher and everything that's in TouchWiz, you end up with about eight gigabytes of storage. In fact, we'll go in to the settings real quick and you can see what I'm talking about. We'll go into storage and it says our total space is 16 gigabytes, but there's only 9.95 available. So this actually does a little bit better than the S4 did because with the S4, it was like you only had half of your space for storage. It looks like with the S5, we get maybe an extra gigabyte of available storage whenever you first power up the phone. That's where that micro SD card slot comes in handy because you can really, I believe 120 gigabytes is the max that that card slot will handle, which is more than you'll ever really need. So the phone also has two gigabytes of RAM, so it shouldn't get sluggish because of a lack of storage. The battery, like we said before, is a 2800 milliamp hour battery that should be good for 21 hours of average use. So if you're not like on it constantly surfing the web, looking at videos, you should be able to get a full 24 hours out of the battery. You should be able to plug it in in the morning and then when you wake up, unplug it. Okay, and then the standby time on that battery is 390 hours or 16 and a half days. So if you turned it on and never used it, you'd have battery available 16 days later. Okay, a few of the features that really drew me to this phone, it does have the fingerprint swipe to unlock, which you would have to set up in settings. So basically you would set up your fingerprint and then it would enable the fingerprint lock screen. That is an alternative to a pin password. If you have a good pin or if you use an app like Time Pin that changes it up randomly, basically you should be okay. But if you're using a pin that you use all the time, someone could just peer over your shoulder and find that. With the fingerprint unlocking, nobody has your fingerprint, only you. So it does make the device a little more secure. And then the main feature, the one that I'm really excited about is the waterproofness. Now they say that it's water resistant, but really Samsung executives have said it's basically waterproof. They can only guarantee that it will not drown in water uh, up to one meter for 30 minutes. So you could basically what they're saying is they guarantee that if you drop it in the toilet or you drop it in the sink, that it's not going to kill the phone, but they cannot guarantee that if you go to the beach and jump in the ocean or if you jump in the pool, they're not guaranteeing that sort of water damage protection. But at any rate, this is kind of like the Samsung Active and it is pretty much waterproof. But like I said, don't go jumping in a pool with this phone in your pocket. You should be okay. Nobody's guaranteeing that you will be okay. Quickly, we'll look at the design of the phone. The shape of this phone is similar to the Note 3 other than its size. So you'll see the rounded edges kind of like on the Note 3 and you'll notice the same little home button. Uh, the same soft buttons just like on the Note 3. If you turn it around, you'll notice a textured back. This textured back is much easier to hold than the back on, say, an HTC One M8. This back is brushed metal and it's very slippery. It's very easy to drop this phone, whereas this phone is more sticky to the touch because of the textured back. Another similarity in this phone and the Note 3, I'll have to remove the case. Uh, you'll notice kind of a textured edge on the outside on both phones. The sides are a little more raised on the S5. On the Note 3, they're much closer together. But anyhow, that kind of helps you to hold it in your hand because you do have those ridges on the side. It makes for a comfortable hold. Now we'll kind of take a tour of the device. I've already mentioned the speaker. It's a pretty big speaker. It should be pretty loud. On the S4, I noticed that my speaker started cracking pretty early on in owning the device. Hopefully this one will fare much better. better. You've got your USB 3.0 jack on the bottom. You have a volume up and down on the side. You have a power button, which if you're right-handed, this is perfect for right-handed thumb. 
I mean, it is absolutely insanely perfect. I mean, that is just where my thumb lands. On the HTC One M8, you have to kind of scoot the phone down and press the top. So I kind of like this button layout a whole lot better. Of course, this has hardware keys instead of software keys like the HTC One M8. And we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And we have the 16 megapixel camera and camera sensors and flash on the back. And then, of course, we have that nice, beautiful Verizon logo. And this part, for some odd reason, is not textured, which I guess that's so that they could stick the Verizon logo on there perfectly so that you would know that it is 4G LTE and from Verizon. Of course, we do have the Galaxy S5 logo there as well. This would have been nice. No Verizon logo, but uh, just whatever. I guess I'll learn to live with that. Anyways, guys, that about wraps it up for my unboxing and quick review of the Samsung Galaxy S5. You can look forward to many more videos on this device in the near future. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more coverage like this in the near future. You can find more of me at DroidMatterX.com. I'm also over at Droid Forum, so check that place out too. I write lots of articles there. Of course, you can find lots of me on Twitter at DroidMatterX. Please be sure to share this video. It helps me more than you know. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.